Hey, it's your girl, Claudia Jordan. We are back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down some of the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. Now sit back, relax, and get ready to sip on this hot tea. We've been having a fun time all week. Uh, please welcome Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? How's it going, Claudia? It is going real good. And I see you and your new love interest, our special guest co-host for the week, <laughs> T.S. Madison, are coordinating tonight. What's up, hey, Maddie? Al. What's going on, Maddie? I don't know. I like that suit you got on. What color is that? That's it's brown. You know what, Maddie? I'm sad. We got one more day together. That's all right. You know, we're going to get to the Grammys together. I like all that. Right. <laughs> now, I need you to wear that chocolate. Honey. You know, they say I got nuts. Uh, you ever had a snicker? <laughs> had a what? A Snickers. <laughs> That's my favorite candy bar. Mm. Mm. Oh, you don't say. All the synergy. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. Let y'all just do y'all's thing. Because uh, uh, why would I get in the way of all this love and magic going on? Hey, before we start the show, we have a message from Al. Al? Yeah, so, mates, during last night's cuffing season game, I mistaken Regina Hall with Regina King. And the last thing I want to do is ever disrespect Regina King and her family. So I apologize for that. Um I didn't mean to mention the passing of her son. If if any way I offended her or her family, I really, from the depth of my soul and heart, I'm sorry. All right. Thank you so much for that. We appreciate it. We always got to clear things up, but we make mistakes and we are here at Fox. So we do that. All right. Uh, how's everybody feeling tonight? Any plans for later on tonight? And what y'all sipping on? Maddie? I'm just having water. <laughs> Why? Damn it. Because, you know, I'm so full of chocolate. <laughs> You're supposed to be drinking all week, Maddie, with me. Um, I'm having something new. I'm doing a slushy um, buttery Chardonnay. So I decided to freeze it. It's still in the blender right now. I decided to do it with ice this time. So I made a slushy buttery Chardonnay. Okay. All right. Well, I'm with Maddie tonight. I'm just drinking water because I'm trying to... Ah, uh, start this year of some kind of healthy. Because, you know, doing the show every night, you drink a lot. Like, you end up, and then you have your time with your friends when you leave. it. It's a lot. So, all right, y'all, here we go. Let's get into the show. Fans are speculating that 39-year-old reality star Drea Michelle is pregnant by 21-year-old NBA player Jalen Green after a video surfaced online. Now, she's catching heat online because he's the same age as her son. All right. Whether she's pregnant or not, do y'all think this relationship is appropriate? Al, go ahead. Jeez. Now, this right here is some shit. This is some starting out your 2024 in a whole new way. Um, it's like she's pregnant by someone her own, her oldest son's age. That's what makes the number thing a thing for me. Because she has a son who's the exact same age as this professional athlete who she's pregnant by. Now, let's put that aside for a moment. Because, you know, if it was if it wasn't for that, maybe I could mentally get over it. But Drea, Drea has been in the entertainment game for like 14 years. And she's not a newcomer. And and because she's been in the game so long, to me, why is she still going after athletes? You know what I mean? Like, why is she still going after athletes? To me, Drea is a woman of a certain age. She's 40 or close to 40. I think she should be dating like the owner of the team or maybe the coach of the team or the owner of a record label, not a rapper. That's how I kind of view Drea now, especially as I've been journeying, journaling and going on the journey with her uh, about who she's been dating. We, She's done athlete, athlete things. She has another child by a different athlete. So I just want more for her. I don't know. That's just kind of how I feel. And can I ask a question, though? And I know this is off subject, but Claudia, why haven't you ever done anything like this? I'm sure you've had plenty of opportunities with all the guys that try to holler at you, especially athletes. Why? Why did you never choose like that athlete route? I dated athletes and I just kept it on the low because I didn't expect much out of it. Like I felt like, you know, a lot of times they're uh, slower to mature because they have everything thrown at them and uh, really spoils, you, you know, it's. They're in the top 1%, I guess you say, is desired men. So um, I took them as, as seriously as I could at the time, but I was a, always been a realist. I've been a realist about uh, dating. So, uh, you know, it just, I could have definitely trapped the ball player. I tried to have a baby by one and just, you know, 
this would have just been my play money. And that would have been living off child support money. That just never was appealing to me. It was never appealing to me. And let me tell you, when I was younger, I liked younger men. When I got older, I did not like younger men anymore. Not like that. I'm, a couple years is one thing, but a 21 year old to me, I, I, I just cannot bear to think of the idiotic conversations that most likely are taking place. Like, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to talk about? You know what I mean? No hate on her mm. because men do it all the time. You see 60 year old man with 20 year old mm. women and older and no one bats an eye. Well, some people bat an eye, but I ain't going to say that. But uh, people in the comments are saying, um, uh, she's AJ nothing but a number. Uh, why would she want to carry his baby? Get to the bag. It's weird, but she's grown. I, personally, uh, under 35, under 40, I'm like, what are we going to talk about? Um, but at He's been grown, I guess. I, not for me, though. Maddie, what would you, what do you think about this? Al, why you didn't ask me about the athletes I dated? <laughs> <laughs> My bad, Maddie. I feel so, you know, attacked. <laughs> okay, okay, so here's the thing. Hold on, hold up. Tell us. Yeah, Give that's the Give us clues. I've always dated athletes. Give us really? some clues about the biggest one you dated. Clue, like just a clue. Uh, Why not whistle a palette a little bit? Well, you know, in my line of of who I am, I never kiss and tell. I just let it be. I let people think whatever they want, you know, because I'm a plus size girl. So you know, people think because you're a plus size girl that you know you don't have you don't have that type of pull. But I'm pretty, and yes, so you, you know, I've dated athletes, <laughs> and they were younger than me. But Maddie, I wonder if we've ever dated the same person. Who knows? Ooh. We may have. Who knows? I would never tell anybody because you know that's not my that's not my thing. Like if he didn't, if if we both weren't like out on the front street with it, then you know I'm I'm not gonna say anything. You know I, I was I was compensated well, and then it turned into like a really great relationship. You know, well one of them did. The other ones were you know it was just a little fling, but they were all younger than me. But they were professional athletes. And they are younger than me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I didn't look at it from the perspective of, okay, I'm, this is going to come, I'm, this is going to be my man. Uh, you know, this was a fun time for me, but, but they were interested. Well, one of them was extremely interested in like really date and we're still, you know, friends to this day, mm -hmm. but here's the thing. Now, Al, you said, why is she dating the, 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 uh, the owner and why yeah, yeah. is she dating the owner of the record label? Well, is the owner of the record label trying to talk to her? Is the owner of the team trying to talk to her? Like mm -hmm. as 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 an older sexy woman, those young gentlemen are are coming after her and they're trying mm -hmm. to talk to her. Should she have had a good time with him and moved on? I think. Should she have, you know, have his baby? I don't think, you know, but a good time maybe. He's rich. He's he's richer than her son. What are you talking about? <laughs> Don't ask a hoe what a woman should do, honey, because the hoe was <laughs> I see. <laughs> and, and Al, you said something quite interesting. You said, well, you know, why should you keep going for the athletes? Or talk to them? But, you know, the athletes be bigger groupies than the groupies, the women that you think are groupies. Like, you'd be mm -hmm. surprised, like, how. And you fall with a bunch of reality star women and, and women that are in the spotlight like that. You you know that these men be like, they be sending their publicists, sending their friends, sending their boys. You don't even have to be a groupie, especially if you got a little bit going on and a couple of dollars in your pocket. They will come for you. They will come mm. for you. I mean, I gotta write this book. Okay. Anyways, oops, she did it again. And again, by again, I mean naked. Pop star Britney Spears has been banned from the Four Seasons Hotel after going topless at their swimming pool and causing problems for staff. Now, according to the hotel, she's been banned before. Do you agree with the hotel banning the pop princess? Maddie, what do you think about this? I do. We got to get Britney some Millerill or some something. We got to get her something to calm her down. Britney is, has been loose ever since they let her out of that uh, that watchtower she was in. Huh? Britney is loose. And we, for so long, have been screaming free Britney. But as soon as we let her go, she go down here to the hotel room doing this type of stuff <laughs> right here. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I've been afraid for Britney since they turned her loose. You know, I've seen her with them Ginsu knives up there spinning around dancing and her dogs looking at her like like they've lost it, like she's lost her mind. Personally, I really want Britney to get back into some type of of, of watch shit because right, right. I would have never thought that the Britney that I've danced to Toxic to would be getting banned from the Four Seasons Hotel, honey, because she's running through their topless. My God today. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. I'll be back. 
You know, I agree with Maddie. I, you know, at the beginning when we started this show and we were covering Britney, I said that I felt like she needed some type of conservatorship and I got my ass handed to me. The fans here ate me alive. But as we saw when she came off of the conservatorship, the bizarre behavior is very bizarre to us. And, and, and it's making us feel uncomfortable at this point. She's been going to that Four Seasons for years and she's been in and out in and out banned and not banned there for years i think they just had enough like they usually do she probably not only just got topless but she'd probably start making in those videos with those knives and the um patrons were like oh my gosh i'm concerned i'm worried i'm not i don't feel safe anymore and they wanted her out of there and let me tell you something when rich people say they want you gone you gotta go what celebrity you are you got to go you know, if she was a regular person and you were just topless when they said you're not supposed to be, they would get them out of there, too. So we can't have different set of rules for, for people just because they're celebrities. I think they did the right thing. She can't abide by the rules. And I, I it does suck that a lot of people on the free Britney, uh, you know, bandwagon and then she gets out and she's kind of showing us why she needed yeah, to visit. like <laughs> oops our bad y'all were right <laughs> but isn't this isn't this lesson learned about how easy it is to comment on someone else's mm -hmm. situation and not knowing all the facts and just going by a headline an optic a screenshot you know what i mean like really knowing very little about the situation but the people that are hands-on know best you know what i mean Girl, what are the people saying in the chat about it? It's Claudia. Okay, Thomas Wright said, I feel like Britney really needs to release music. She may need, she may need that as therapy, honestly. And Alex119 said, the free Britney people have to answer for themselves. No solution. And Princess said, see, they had her in the conservatorship for a reason. <laughs> We're sorry. <laughs> Oops. All right, former reality star and producer Stevie J. It's up to his old tricks again. A woman with the Instagram name So Unique took to Instagram to post this allegation. By the way, y'all, Stevie J was the creep who got me pregnant on purpose. Like he literally made sure I got prego just to ghost me. Now, if true, we all know that Stevie J is wrong, but should some women be more accountable for sleeping with men with questionable reputations. Al, what do you think? Absolutely. See, Claudia, you were reading my mind. I, I think that I am secondhand embarrassed for both of them. You know, shame on both parties involved in this. Um, and, and is this how you really want to start off? I'm going to say this all January. Is this really how you really want to start off 2024? Like, Stevie J, you and I are the same age, and we don't still need to be out here running in the streets, getting people pregnant and running from them, hiding from them. That doesn't make any sense. And young lady, you know the history of Stevie J and women and, and getting them pregnant. And, 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 and it's not very flattering. So why would you participate in something like this? I don't know. I'm going to say... Both of them are at fault. Both of them are wrong in this situation. And I hope that if it is his, he does the right thing and takes care of that child. Baby, they don't be paying child support. Never. Well, you okay. would know in one of your best friends. Yeah. Got a child with him. Yeah, she don't be getting child. Now he does love his kids, but not enough to break the bread. Maddie, what do you think? Sus, you seen what he did with Eve on that sex tape. Sus, you seen what he did with Mimi Faust. Sus, you seen what he did with the real Faith e Faith Evans. We talking about Biggie's girl. Sus, we seen what he did with Jocelyn Hernandez. Sus, you got to take some accountability in this yourself. Mm -hmm. Bruh, it's, it's, why can't you girls wear a rubber? What is wrong with wearing a rubber? We are in 2024. Please wear a rubber. Are you be sad with me? R U B B A rubber. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Like a guy like that with that rep, I, I understand he got a huge penis. Okay. We all know about Stevie's penis. We all seen it. And people want to, you're supposed to have fun with that with the rubber and keep it moving. You don't like that bust up in you. And I understand pillow talk is a mother effort and you believe, oh, it's different with me. And that was, he's changed. They never change, y'all. People did are who they say they are. They are. Chief, Chief Queef said, poor Tussie Cat Management. And poor P Management. Why are you Chief busting Queef said, Why poor are you Tussie Cat Management. Now, that's a good one. All right, y'all. Oh, I'm going to pray for you, girlfriend. 
Mm. All right, coming up next, guess who Keisha Kaor is accused of sleeping with? And later, you will never guess what you could do to win a free BBL. Stay tuned. Hit that like button. We'll be right back. What's going on, Claudia? I'm in the White House, and if I'm not on the show tomorrow, then something happens. You're in prison. <laughs> TGIF. Listen to what you just said. You are broadcasting your show from the White House. If that is not the hope and the dream of the slaves, then I do not know what is. Live and interactive. I just met the White House press secretary, and she knows me, and I think she knows me from T. I said, I have to go broadcast. She goes, oh, that's right. You're live. And I'm like, you know about us. On Fox Soul. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Meet the scam. A simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you! But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SavedByTheScan.org. We got a few new phrases the kids are out there saying, and I want you to tell us what you think they mean. McMillan and Mara. Donald Duckin. I went to graduate school. <laughs> <laughs> Every Thursday. To avoid terms like this. And this is what my life has come to. All right, next one. Cambridge. Okay, Mr. Harvard. Proxy beef. Oh, I know what this is. This is when you don't have a problem directly with the person. How did you but know the person, this? Because I speak English. Um, <laughs> proxy. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all, we don't only talk about the messy tea. We have good stories, too, like this one. Now, the Gills, a black family in Nashville, Tennessee, decided to adopt their son's best friend, who so happens to be white. Now, the child had been in and out of foster care for years. Okay. What do you think of this wholesome story? And what do you think, do, what do you think, um, our people are over there feeding and teaching him because, you know, the food is getting all the season now. He's probably like, oh, my God, what is this stuff? Maddie, what do you think about this story? Well, I think he's going to end up with high blood pressure and uh, <laughs> with diabetes, but it's all worth it, honey, because he is going to make the best potato salad this side <laughs> of the equator. It is a wonderful thing, you know, when black people step up and, uh, you know, and do charitable things, you know, because as black people, there's so many things that we could have done if we really wanted to do evil things to people that done evil things to us. But we always tend to find compassion in our hearts and the love mm -hmm. of God that, you know, that's instilled in us to, you know, just be compassionate and take somebody in and, and, and raise a family and make good potato salad. <laughs> right. Al, what do you think about this, this wholesome story? This I agree. I agree with uh, T.S. on this one. And, and look, if production can put that picture back up, look at this family. They look so young. And she has three kids of her own to take on that fourth child. That, that, that really means a lot. And to help him means a lot. What is he going to be eating? Chicken. And what is he going to be doing? A lot of praying. Hey. <laughs> that's what they go. That's what he gonna learn over there. Now this is the deal. We cannot be mad if this young man grows up liking him a good old sister. Get him some swag. You know, got him walking and talking like he's one of us. We can't say he's cultural appropriating anything with the fact that he grew up in this family right here. You know. I feel like black people don't get the credit they should they should really get for the kind of compassion that we have, despite the way we're treated. And it's oftentimes not reciprocated. If anybody has a reason to be mad at white society in the, in the dominant um, uh, demographic, it's black people. We should hold a grudge. I mean, there's people hold a grudge for less. And we continue to embrace others. You know, we even... Uh, they, 
what's the white equivalent to inviting someone to the cookout? Like we're always looking for reasons to find common right. ground with other nationalities and other demographics to be like, come on over. Oh, you can dance like us. We we connect with you. Oh, you 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 like the same music? Come on in. We're very inclusive. Look at even this picture. I see families that adopt black kids that look like the kids of prop. In this picture, this kid looks like he's front and center. He looks very happy. He doesn't like he's being exploited. And they, they just look content. I, I, I'm really proud of black people for despite the drama and the stuff that we put up with to still have it in our hearts right. to do this. It's a beautiful thing. And that's what that having that soul is about. You know, uh, Unique Jacob said he's going to be the Paul Wall of his generation. Okay. T.S., <laughs> T.S., I think I asked you before, do, do you want kids? And if you did, could you raise a white child? Yes, I want children one 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 of these summers <laughs> down the line. Um, and would I be able to raise a white child? Yeah, baby, that baby going to know every language in the United States of, of the world. Double <laughs> negatives, Ebonics, honey. He going to learn how, he going to know how to read, fight, stab, shoot, and love on somebody and get on. trick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, it looks like reality star Melody Holt is channeling her inner left eye. Melody and her ex-husband Martel Holt were involved in a domestic dispute the incident escalated to her dousing his house with charcoal lighter fluid. Take a look. Call them and get my money. Move back to the account. No, it's not, it's not money. It's, it's split 50 50 like it's supposed to be. We didn't split the $150,000. 50 50. <gasps> what? Why don't you mess up? Don't do mail. Stop, mail. All right, y'all. What do you think about this? And do you think it's reality TV paid a, played a part in them? being toxic to each other. Al, what do you think about this story? I, th I think reality TV definitely magnified it for sure. And you know this, it, it does in everybody that I've ever seen participate in reality TV. It just becomes a part of their DNA and how they manage conflict, how they respond to bad stuff. You know, it, it, it becomes a part of them. Now, this right here was interesting to me because I got to be honest, I always thought that Martel was the one that was the troublemaker. I always thought that Martel was the one that was the abuser. This was this was very eye opening for me to see her in her true behavior that he has always talked about. I wish that he had leaked this video back when they were going through their divorce. Because that way we would know that this is an even playing field. I feel like both of them are abusers at this point. And who goes through someone's house with lighter fluid and ruin their furniture and, 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 and the possibility of burning down their house? That's very toxic. And that didn't just happen overnight. Okay. Maddie, what are your thoughts on this? Don't do it, Miss Seeley. Don't do it. Don't trade places with Miss Sophia. Don't trade places with her. This is my thing right here, okay? Women, men are not worth it. Money is not worth it. Girl, you are on national TV or national internet, honey, about to burn this man's house to the ground. You are a public figure. You can't let them get you to those places like that, girl, where you risk your freedom. You risk your sanity, girl. Listen, lawyer up. Lawyer up. So this is the thing that, again, how we discussed earlier about not having the full, the full story and reacting to what we saw. Of course, on its own, this looks horrible. I could not defend, like, if she was really ready um, to light this house on fire. But I have been in similar situations. So um, Melody and I did a movie together, and we got to talking about a, a bunch of things, and I really like her. She is someone that definitely has been a victim of narcissistic abuse for many years. And if you've ever been with someone that has that's a narcissist and they know how to push your buttons, and then they go grab the camera and then record your reaction. So in mm -hmm. this particular case, um, how would y'all feel if y'all had a joint account with your mate and they took 100% of the money and didn't leave your, your half? This is why, why you don't do that. Yeah, so they were married, right? So they had an account. Mm -hmm. And I did ask her permission if I could talk about this because we did talk about this a while ago. They had... $37,000 in this one account, right? He mm -hmm. took hers and his. She's asking the video, just give me back my half. So that's what was happening there. And then, you know, the person that's recording will say things, trigger you, and then record you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the light of fluid, it looks horrible. I, I Listen, I can't defend that. It looks horrible, but I do understand. I had a guy that brought money and then spent it on a hooker. And I was like, I wish I would have had some life. <laughs> I'm just saying. But yeah, you're right, Maddie. Both of you are right. Um, you know, she has a lot to lose now. But I understand. And I think that's why she has zero connection with him. Like she's like had to cut it off because she probably said thinks 
you bring out the worst in me when I'm around you and I don't like myself around you because I'm sure she's embarrassed about that. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Dana said true behavior, reactive behavior after years of treating her like garbage. And H. Nessa said Martel is a toxic one and a gaslighter, no pun. And Logan said it's often that a victim becomes the abuser as a defense mechanism. And Erica Carr said the same thing. He took her money. Mm. They okay. need to just be away from each other 100%. Yeah, I think. yeah that's what it sounds like. Don't you we'll think? Do okay. It. Hey, all right, y'all. Rick Ross's baby mama, Tia Kemp, is claiming that while rapper Gucci Mane was in prison, his now wife, Keisha Kiar, slept with Rick Ross. Take a look. Uh, Gucci Mane, Keisha Kiar, too, while you was in prison. I seen her pulling out from his studio house in that Rose Royce she was driving. It was a white one. All right, Keisha clapped back, denying the rumor in an Instagram post, saying she's never had dealings with Rick Ross and that her husband and Rick are friends. Do you think there's any truth to this rumor, or should Keisha call the lawyers and lawyer up against these claims? Because that's a horrible claim to have when you're married and these people know each other. Maddie, what you think? Woo! Okay, I did see the pictures of her and Rick Ross, and I did see like when they when they dug up the receipts and I seen them sitting by each other and they was, you know, I don't know. I know Tia, she goes hard. I've spoken to Tia on personal levels uh, and communicated with Tia. And when I was doing the Queens court, um, she'd been terrorizing Rick Ross for the longest. I don't know what to believe. I don't know if it's true or not. You know, I don't know Ke Keisha K or like that, but what I do know is that looking at those receipts, it, it did kind of look a little fishy. You know, I don't put it past nobody. If a man got money, honey, you know, money talks. Everything else walks to the bed. Okay. Al, what you think? Um, I see, I'm not too I'm not too up to date on this, but I do know that the last week she's been very vocal on um IG and the internet. And it just looks to me like she's upset about something and it looks like she's kind of unraveling. So T S knows more than 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 I do. So I I, I don't know. It doesn't feel right. I think Keisha is a smart woman. I mean, the way she stacked that money and flipped his, Gucci Mane's money when she was in when he was in prison. I think she's devoted to him. I really do. And I hate when you have beef with a with a, with a girl, and they may know something or think they can make you look crazy, whatever, and they just go blab it online to kind of get you back. Like fight fire with fire. Did you know? I don't know. I don't know their business like that. I just hate a messy bitch that's going to go run your mouth like that. Like, where's the girl code? All right. Moving up. Coming up next, the mother in the Uvalde shooting is standing by her son. And later, find out who is slated to play Joe Jackson in the upcoming biopic. Oh, we about to drag this lady. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> Inside the black box. So you guys ready to have some fun? Forget the acting studio. I'm here with you guys. Creativity will find its way. It doesn't matter what the ethnicity is. Television and movies are the mediums of stereotypes. Just because we all have the same color don't mean we have the same experience. Your uniqueness is your greatness. Welcome inside the black box. Every Monday on Fox Soul. Take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine, because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. Can I hug you? Yes. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I'd probably do. I love you, I love you too. What's going on, Claudia? I'm in the White House, and if I'm not on the show tomorrow, then something happened. <laughs> you in prison. <laughs> T-G-I-F. Listen to what you just said. You are broadcasting your show from the White House. If that is not the hope and the dream of the slaves, then I do not know what is. Live and interactive. I just met the White House press secretary, and she knows me, and I think she knows me from T. I said, I have to go broadcast. She goes, oh, that's right. You're live. And I'm like, you know about us. On Fox. We got a few new phrases the kids are out there saying, and I want you to tell us what you think they mean. McMillan and Mara. Donald Duckin. I went to graduate school. <laughs> <laughs> Every Thursday. To avoid terms like this. And this is what my life has come to. All right, next one. Cambridge. Okay, Mr. Harvard. Proxy beef. Oh, I know what this is. 
This is when you don't have a problem directly with the person. How did you with know the person, this? Because I speak English. Um, <laughs> proxy. Welcome back to TGIF Soulmates. Funk, um, I'm sorry. Uh, T.S. Madison is not familiar with the whole turtle thing. She's like, why is everybody putting turtles in the chat? There was a commercial that we had with a woman's dog was named Turtle, and y'all complained, complained, complained. We're tired of these commercials. And then they changed the commercials. And guess what? They now want, the, you want the, old, they, they want the old thing back. So now they're flooding the chat with turtles. Y'all don't know what you want. You don't know what you want. I know what they don't want. What? They better not run down there to file their taxes so they can get a BBL. They better oh. not. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Hey, we got to read this heifer because I live down in Texas and this definitely hits home. Now, Adriana Reyes, the mother of the Uvalde shooter who killed 19 children and two teachers before turning the gun on himself, is sticking by her son. She says she believes her son is in heaven. That's right. She thinks her son who killed all those children and innocent teachers is in heaven. She stated, I believe God has forgiven him for what he did. The only people who are in hell are the ones who betray Jesus. She also explained why she will not apologize to the families of the victims. Now, the mother of the shooter said, what will it accomplish? It's not going to bring back their kids and it won't change their minds on what they think of me or my son. I'm going to go to your thoughts on this mother, but I'm going to go first on this one because I hate this bitch. Okay. I cannot stand you. I live in Texas. I remember that day like it was yesterday. We were all freaking out as the police mishandled this situation so bad and waited outside, blocked parents that drove up there to get their kids from going into the building while the kids were still alive. They had to sit outside the building while their kids were screaming and running and hiding and being gunned down. Some kids hid under the dead bodies of their classmates to pretend to be dead so they would not get shot. This piece of shit guy was running around the school, blasting little kids in the head with very high weaponry, very powerful weapons. Some of the kids were unrecognizable, you filthy bitch. I'm sorry, I know we're not supposed to be cussing, but I think this story calls for it. How dare you say you will not apologize to the children, the, the families of the victims? Your evil son that probably showed signs left and right and you were negligent. You have a part of this. This is on you and your son. You and your dusty, raggedy son, and I will not say rest in peace, both will be in hell, not in heaven. And who are you to say God has, Jesus has forgiven him? Jesus has forgiven him? Are you serious? You don't think those kids were not the kids? They were not the, the creation of God and Jesus? I'm so sick of people using, speaking for God and speaking for Jesus with this nonsense so you can sleep good at night. You need to have nightmares every single night, just like all those parents have nightmares every single night as they have to hear their children get gunned down and turned into carnage. This is a huge story in Texas and shame on Texas for reelecting Greg Abbott, who did nothing about this situation. We could have had Beto and y'all wanted this asshole because you're so in love with your goddamn guns. I'm sorry, y'all. You know how I be getting about these situations. I don't think there's anything else to be said about this, Claude. At all. I think you wrapped this up real good. You, yes. you know, it's people making excuses for the kids, like at least have some kind of humility, compassion for the victims. Your son's dead because he killed himself. Their kids are dead because your son killed them. All right, y'all, I'm going to read a couple comments and we're going to move on. Keisha Smith said some children were cut in half for being shot so many times. Exactly. And I remember that. Mr. Burns said one of those parents need to help her into a grave right alongside with him. I'm with that. Here for fun said she must not read the Bible because it doesn't say that. If he didn't accept the Lord as, a, as his savior, he's in hell. And Jen Jay said the real story is how 377 law enforcement did nothing while watching those children and teachers were being killed. Oh, wait a minute. But some of those police officers that had family inside that building... They went in and got their kids and left all those Latino and, and brown kids in school because you didn't think much about their lives because they were not white. That's the real tea. That's the real tea right there. Wow. Yeah, I'm never going to let people forget about that because that really, really bothered me. It really, really bothered me. I, I, mm. Anyways, let's move on. Let's switch it up. 50 Cent is out here ranting and raving about his weight loss journey. 
He claimed to have gone down from 253 pounds to 210 pounds because he was in the gym working out. Now, do you think 50 Cent was on that oh, 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 Zemphic app? What do you think? Well, I'm going to say this. Uh, 50 Cent is handsome, whether he's big or small. But I think he's taking the shot. And 50 Cent, it's okay. Listen, it's okay. I think the giveaway is losing the weight in your face and doing it so quickly. I think that's what the giveaway, that's what gives it away that you're doing more than just working out. In my opinion, he may be doing something that we all don't know. Maybe he's juicing or something else, but it's definitely giving you that exempic look, especially with it dropping so fast and his face being so slim. And on top of that, wasn't he sued or didn't he sue a plastic surgeon down in Miami. Remember the lady who claimed or made insinuated that he had the penile enlargement done at her med spa. So yes, we know is. he's we know that he's not foreign to doing cosmetic things. So I'm not saying he got a penis enlargement, but I'm saying we know that he he went to the spa. He went to the med spa. So I think it could be the Zempic. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Me neither. Thank God for it. <laughs> and Maddie, what you think about this? You I mean, think he on the Olympic or he working out? I think he on the Menjora, the other one, because the Menjora make it go down faster. You know what I'm saying? Than the Olympic, or uh -huh. so is he attributing it to him working out? Is that what he's saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because you know, because I, I was going to bring up a point um, about uh, being un unhealthy, not unhealthy, but like having something like pancreas cancer or prostate cancer or, you mm. know like a lot of men battle that at times you know and so just like in hollywood with the black panther honey you know we didn't we didn't know what was going on with him chadwick bozeman and you know we were just looking at him and we thought that you know he just lost a lot of weight for a role but you know if he's attributed it to working out we gonna just go ahead on and <laughs> know that it is and a make it working out it's those so big I will say this, and I, I've been all open about it. I've done Ozempic twice, and uh, I had a stubborn 30 pounds that I gained when I moved to Texas, and I used it to lose about mm, 20. I lost 20 of it, um, and I just, my menopause, maybe, maybe, maybe pre-menopause, I don't know. My hormones is changing, and I took a shortcut, and I'm okay with talking about it. I don't know, because he does have that look about him. But do you remember when 50 Cent played that cancer patient in a movie years ago? And he mm -hmm. is very disciplined when, it, when he'd have to lose weight for a movie, but maybe it's a combination. I think maybe there's a combination of a little Zumpic and a little working out because it ain't like he's a scrub when it comes to working out and it ain't like he's mm -hmm. lazy. You know what I'm saying? 50 Cent will get in the gym. We all seen him body, when he was bodied out. Remember when he was like upside mm -hmm. down in the video? He's not like a lazy person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, I think, uh, you know, a little combination of the two is probably the right way to do it. You know what I mean? Uh, Kavali, I P now. Um... What'd you say? I want to know about the penile surgery. <laughs> I don't think he did. Can we that. see before and after pictures? <laughs> 50 Cent gives me big D energy. Well, didn't Vivica Fox talk about it when it was when this came yes. out? She talked about it on Cocktails of Queens. She said she didn't she didn't have that problem. She said he didn't need none of that, and she spoke very highly of their sex life. So I believe that he got the BDE. He has that energy about him though. Okay. But the lady was wrong. She used his picture and didn't say he had it, but she just used it and then had an ad about it. You oh. know? Yeah, but he did drop the lawsuit in March of last year. So they did settle. Mm -hmm. So just well, let's just let me there. see the before and after. That's all. You know what? 50 Cent, I know you be watching because you posted us before. You posted a clip from Cocktail. So he does watch Fox All. So if uh, 50 Cent is watching right now, Maddie, what would you like to say to him? Uh, let me see the before <laughs> and after. I want to see what you were suing for and what, and what was real. For research purposes only, of course. That's all. <laughs> That's, it's research. We're trying to be factual here on the show. All right, check out this tweet. It says, I could never date a man who's been to jail or has friends who've been to jail like ever. All right, would y'all ever consider finding love during lockup, Maddie? Um, I mean... You know, I was a call girl. I don't found love in all types of strange places, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh now in the mindset that I am now, I'm not I'm not dating a man in jail. Now, if a man that I'm dating happens to go to jail for protecting me or for defending me or his honor or something like that, you know, I'm a I'm a ride with him for a few minutes. Now I'm gonna have my little side piece 
until he get out. And I'm going to tell my side piece, you know, we ain't, we can't go no further than this, okay? <laughs> you know, because my man coming home because he was protecting me. And you may, don't get in the line of fire. Okay, that makes sense. Al, what do you think? Would you date someone? <laughs> I laugh, Claudia, because I think about Claudia says all the time, Maddie, on the show, that she is 10 toes, not holding nobody down nope. <laughs> while Nothing. they are in prison. No. Um. I'm going to tell you like this. I'm just going to be honest. At the age I am, I like who likes me. So if somebody in prison likes me. <laughs> this is the collect call from. This is the collect call from. This is the collect call from. All right. I accept. <laughs> I like who like me shit. If, if you in prison and you like me, holla at your boy. This is the collect call from. <laughs> um, Absolutely not. Um, no, uh, you should have thought about me when you were doing your crime. Now, like Maddie said, if they were protecting me or we were in some stuff together, like moving some weight and I was down, like maybe in the early nineties, if I was ever doing that, that's different. I'm just saying, but like now at this big age, I don't have a lot of time to spare y'all. I probably got about 15 popping summers left in me that are popping. Then after that, I'll probably be hunched over. Who knows? I'm just saying, I don't have a lot of time to waste. And there's too many people out there in these streets. Um, I don't want to have to be worried about it, and and I, I just can't do it. And I'm not ride or die when you go to prison. I'm ride or die outside. But in prison, I respect y'all that can. I I had a, a homegirl that was in jail, and it was a month. And them collect calls for that one month was so. How do y'all afford them? They are mad. You know they be charging them up too. All right. Can you call uh, them? I don't know, but some of them. My my friend's friend got a phone in, in prison. He be giving us jail. He be giving us the bets to bet on on the, like the football games. Like he has a lot of time to do research. Um, <laughs> if he, he hey, said Boo, you made a lot of money with him. He gave me a 10 team parlay one time. All te 10 teams had to win. My $500 turned to $5,500. I put money on his books after that. I will do that. I got you. Make it make sense. Mims, who a lot of people have been asking to be on the show, said, Claudia, never say never. 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 All right. Coming up next, Fado, who is slated to play Joe Jackson in an upcoming biopic and later. Bi Y'all say biopic or bi biopic? Biopic. Okay, I go back and forth. All right, and later, a black metal band tosses a shocking object into the crowd. Stay tuned so we can talk about it. We'll be right back. What's going on, Claudia? I'm in the White House, and if I'm not on the show tomorrow, then something happens. <laughs> you in prison. <laughs> D-G-I-F. Listen to what you just said. You are broadcasting your show from the White House. If that is not the hope and the dream of the slave, then I do not know what is. Live and interactive. I just met the White House press secretary, and she knows me, and I think she knows me from T. I said, I have to go broadcast. She goes, oh, that's right. You're live. And I'm like, you know about us. On Fox Soul. When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men. Take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love, our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Welcome back to TGIF. Shout out to all the soulmates in the chat. We were up to about 43, 4,400. So we appreciate y'all rocking with us. 
Um, we really, really do. Thank you so much. All right, Coleman Domin Domingo is slated to play Joe Jackson in Michael Jackson's upcoming biopic. Domingo most recently played Mr. in The Color Purple. Do you think Coleman is a good fit for the role? Uh, Maddie, let's go to you first. Um, I I think so. I mean, they watched him slap uh, uh, Fantasia down there and, and throw that plate down on, there, on the floor, honey. We already know what Joe Jackson did to those children. So, hey, and I also had the opportunity to work with uh, Coleman Domingo in the movie Zola. And in the movie Zola, he was a pimp. He was a, 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 a Nigerian pimp. And mm -hmm. it was crazy. And I think that he has range in his acting. And I really love Coleman Domingo. And I want him to get all of his things. Congrats on that movie. I remember that. That was that was a big deal. That was Thank big you. Deal. Mm -hmm. All right, Al, what are your thoughts? Do you think that he's right for this? Would you, would you, would you oh, expect? yeah. You know, Joe Jackson was a dynamic man. And, and his character has a lot of history and a lot of different layers to it. And it just seems like Coleman Domingo, he's on fire. And you've seen in all his different roles, the different levels that he can go to with his acting. So it just makes sense for me and that he played Joe Jackson. It also makes sense to me that we finally are getting a real film a real film and not one of those rush to, you know, to make money films on the Jacksons. I'm really excited about this and I can't wait to see Coleman Domingo do his thing because I know for a fact that he's going to kill it. All right. Uh, Danita Chantel, Chantel said he's a great actor. Paige said he's a thespian, so I think he'll be able to pull it off. Dreaming Edmund said we should have got Mr. Lawson. And Real Lyric said, I worry about men who play abusive men too well. Ooh, that's interesting. Mm. Okay, okay. Wait, wait. He a thespian? He a thespian, girl. <laughs> a thespian is an actor. Come on. Oh, okay. I thought this. <laughs> it's like, I'm a thespian. Like, I'm not like a fake actor. I'm a real one. I study oh, like okay, that. I But he, he is a part of the LBGTQ plus. You know that. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Yeah. All right. mm -hmm. Okay. Young, young Thug's private jail call with his girlfriend Mariah the scientist was leaked and is surfacing online. Take a look. I love you. I miss you. And I love you. I love you too, baby. Daddy. I'm I your baby. Like prison night tonight on the show. All right, have you ever had an intimate con moment or conversation with your partner leaked like details that y'all been talking? Go ahead, Maddie. You have an obvious reaction to this, so let me go ahead. And uh, first. Did she say? <laughs> did she say, "Daddy, I'm a am I a good baby?" Yeah, I think so. Uh, she, she definitely a thespian. <laughs> 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 have you ever had what one of your conversations? The world is a mess, Maddie. Like that's why we are in business and that's why we're going on four years. We never have things, we never run out of topics because the world is just a mess. Have you ever had one of your conversations with like, you know, an intimate conversation leaked? Like anybody put your conversation on blast, tapes, anything like that? Has anyone ever done you like that? Girl, so much stuff for me has leaked, you know, and that's why I love to get right on ahead of it. Yeah, it was me. I did it. Sure mm -hmm. did. I said it, you know, yeah. but I just I think that, you know, people who do that in the in the prison system, they should be held accountable, just as accountable as those people that get do medical records and things like that. Yeah. You know, they should be held accountable because that you shouldn't be leaking anything that's protected. You know, that's his intimate and his private moments with his people. And let I, me... didn't, I didn't need to know, honey, did, did, did she want to know she was a good baby? <laughs> was this really leaked though think about it when you listen to this video the part that made me feel uncomfortable is you can only hear her talking you can't really hear him so who who really leaked what right it's just as awkward to me and, and it doesn't sit right I don't know it just doesn't sit right to me and then if I think about it I I, I just say this in general unless he's like committed to her a hundred percent and that's his main chick she deserves better. And 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 I, I just don't understand how this happened. He you got know, money. Mm -hmm. He got money. In he jail? Yes. Okay. It, it, so how does she get the money? How does she get the money? And I don't know. So please tell me, both of you. How does a person in jail who has a whole lot of money, obviously I'm thinking his assets are in an account, right? How does How does that money get to her? 
I don't know. I don't date people in jail, so I would never know. Well, I have. So what happens is they get somebody to Western Union you the money. You know what I'm saying? They get on the call and they'll have somebody to Western Union you the money from wherever they have, have it hidden or whatever little investments they've done on the streets. They're still running. You know, that's why he's in there right now because of running things. <laughs> 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 you should be ashamed of yourself, allegedly. <laughs> Yo, it seems this past year though, it seems like a whole bunch of calls got leaked, like the Sh Shirley Strawberry and Ernesto. Right. They keep talking about us, by the way. They watch TGIF. Well, well, she does. I don't know if he does, but they keep talking about us on there. It seems like that happens a lot. As far as like leaking stuff, yeah, and I think it's hella annoying because it's like. Someone you cool with right now, you thinking I can speak freely with you and I can say, you know, you say shady stuff to your besties, your good friends. And then when things turn, you're going to use that against them when you know what it was. I think that's super whack. I don't like it. But yeah, it it is weird that only one person could be heard on that. Maybe she leaked it to let the other girls know I'm his main. You know, that could be a thing. Mm, okay. right, like Tasha K did with R. Kelly stuff. Oh <laughs> that's why she definitely need to go to jail <laughs> for the stuff she do. Jail. Oh, so Nina Stewart said Al needs to watch Love After Lockup and Love During Lockup. Okay, what does it do? What does it say? It tells well, you how to get the money? No, no well, it shows all the stuff because it shows the relationship, the day to day. All right, hell, we got to take a break. Keep it locked because coming up next, a black metal band tosses a shocking object into the crowd. We'll be right back. Take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine, because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. I hug you? Yeah. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I would probably do. Oh, man. I love you, too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all. A black metal band may have taken things too far at their recent gig. Now the band is facing backlash after tossing a real pig's head no into way. the crowd. Look at that. What would you do if you were at a concert and an animal head was being tossed around through the crowd? Now, Al, you from Horse Pass in Virginia. <laughs> I feel like you have some farming uh, experience and activity activities. So maybe it's not as offensive as it be to us city girls over here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about you know, that? I'm, a, I'm definitely from Horse Pass to Virginia. I, now, what we have or do, I mean, we grew up eating sausage and bacon, of course. Also, uh, pickled pig feet. I've had pickled pig feet. But I don't know about this head thing now. This head thing, I know in many cultures, 
the head of a pig does, you know, stand for good luck. It stands for wealth. It stands for fertility. So a lot of cultures do honor a pig's head. Um, but in this particular case, I think it had an association with the Lord of the Flies, right? Where the pig head represents the darkness that is within all of us. So I think that's what this band was going for. So either way, I don't like it. So Man. what do you think, T.S.? What is a black metal band? What is that? You know, heavy metal, but black people that, it's usually white boys that do that, but black Wait a minute, these black folks doing this type of stuff? Like that hard rock, heavy metal, oh, that headbanger oh stuff? Oh God, oh God, I thank you God. I have nothing to do with this God, honey. Hi, Yabashata. We bind it up, honey. We cast it out, Father God. God, we ask you in your son Jesus' name. Yeah, I, I cast that out. No, ma'am. Well, you know, a, a good smoked pig is good now. Yeah, I, I, I would smoke a pig and eat it, but I, right. I ain't finna be at no heavy metal band bumping my head and throwing no pig head through the... Through the right. <laughs> First of all, you, you, they probably didn't keep it refrigerated. It probably stunk. It's Ooh. probably decomposing. If they just bought it to throw into the crowd, they didn't probably keep it clean like they would if they were going to cook it. And how much meat is on the head? Anyways, this is absolutely disgusting. Think about all the germs and bacterium that are on this thing. You throw it into a crowd. Absolutely disgusting. I think people need to stop with this gimmick stuff and let your talent, your music, whatever, speak for itself. And it's just giving demonic. Yes. Which a lot of that music is kind of like that. Why is that pig's mouth open? Production, can you show that one more time? Why is the pig's mouth open? Well, it's probably like that when they killed it. it probably I guess like not. We're not going to get to see it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh! It almost looks like it's smiling. <laughs> Only Claudia. Goonies never say die said throwing around animal parts is not new to any metal community. Oh, remember, um, what's his name? Ozzy Osbourne used to bite off pigeon heads and all that kind of weird stuff back Ooh, in the day. Shit. He used to do all that. I, I grew up in Rhode Island where there's a lot of white people, so I knew I'm a little bit privy to the goings on of heavy metal people. They do a lot of weird stuff. All right, y'all. On a lighter note... I recently discovered a woman is offering clients that file their taxes with her the chance to win a free BBL. <laughs> Are we taking this too far? And would you trust her to do your taxes? Al, what do you think? <laughs> um, I think that, you know, I called my friends that do marketing for a very famous plastic surgeon here. And she said, this is in fact true. She said from uh, January to April are the biggest months for them doing BBLs for women. The same way um, July through October are the biggest months for women having babies. So must be some truth to it. So this tax preparer is like, I'm going to ride this wave. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to give away a free BBL if you come do taxes with me. So it sounds like a win-win marketing situation for me. Maddie, please well, make sure. Why in the hell she ain't giving away uh, uh, free teeth? Dental. It's a lot of girls uh, uh, down there getting BBLs and their whole mouth is toe up. Ain't nobody no, looking at the a, mouth. Nobody looking at the mouth, Maddie. Yeah, yeah, missing, me. missing side tooth and a big side ass. Make That's children. good. That's less teeth. Side tooth gone. Gold teeth all in their mouth. <laughs> They've been chewing on four's cans. Honey, when I tell you, it is the fool. Why this girl ain't down there giving out teeth first, then BBL second? Hell no, I wouldn't let her do my taxes. <laughs> yes, you will. You're going to get your money back. Okay, and it's going straight to the BBL? No, I don't I, I'm just sick of, I'm just so sick of this cult. I'm so sick of where we are in society. Like, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. Y'all <laughs> hating on her hustle now. That ain't cool. Yes, I sure am. I'm a hater. No, I ain't hating on it. Get your money. It just, I ain't coming down there to file my taxes. <laughs> and yet, Marcia T said, to pop the belief, I do file my taxes, baby. Marsha T said the marketing strategy is genius. All right, last story. Let's try to squeeze this in. Uh, okay. Kevin Gates revealed that he puts his women on a 90-day sex restriction when they get out of line. Do you think it's right to withhold sex when you and your partner are in a rough spot? Maddie, go first. Wait a minute. He said women. So them ain't his partners. Those are his friends. And you know that, that they did something wrong to him. He just passing that dick around. And when he when they do something to him, he just pulls it back from them. That don't mean he ain't giving it to nobody else. I like Kevin Gates. I do. Yeah. Okay. Al, what do you think about this? Yeah, you know, 
if you look at research, uh, people who have been victims of sexual victimization or sexual trauma like he has been, he's been very vocal about it. They set limits on how you interact with them in their intimacy. Sounds like that's what he does. <sighs> I don't care. Uh, how about that? I, I don't even care. You spit in people's mouths that are pregnant. You do it to Kevin Gates. You a whole different kind of freaky. I'm scared of you, actually. And I'm not scared a lot. I like a long, big challenge, but you scare me. All right. I want to thank my co-hosts, Al Reynolds and T.S. Madison, for joining me tonight. Thank you so much, Maddie. Thank you, Al. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for a great show next. We'll see you tomorrow. And you don't want to miss tomorrow because Miss Netta and Charles, you do not want to miss this Ooh, show. Ooh, okay. Down like Kevin Gates. Mm. Have a good night, so much.